Um, so my name is Christina Cobbold and I'm a mathematics lecturer at the University of Glasgow. Um, so in my day-to-day -day job I do a mixture of teaching and research. I don't think I even realised mathematician was a, was a career. Um, certainly at school I just had a, quite a wide uh, interest in uh, lots of different subjects. Um, I mean, I, I, yeah sure I liked science but I also liked art and uh, for a while there I thought oh maybe I want to go into art. But I'm an applied mathematician so um, in my case that means taking mathematics and bringing it together with biology. Um, so I mainly work in applications to ecology. Um, so that's quite, it's actually quite diverse. So um, I'm quite interested in insects and how to control insect populations. So um, maths and biology are not really two subjects that you normally um, put together. Um, uh, but actually, um, mathematics can get you a long way in understanding just very simple biological problems to quite complicated ones. So I've got a little prop with me so I can kind of give you an idea. So, um, so this is from my kitchen. So um, it's a random collection of pasta. So I've got some tiny pasta shells and larger tubes here and some lovely spiral ones, which is my, my favourite I had for dinner last night. So they're all different shapes and sizes and the gaps between them all vary as well. So if I said to you, um, how many pieces of pasta are in this jar? You, you probably kind of squint a bit and then maybe hazard a guess. Um, but you can be a bit more systematic than that and you can actually try and estimate like how many are in there. So you can kind of say, okay, well, what's the, what's the average volume of a, of a piece of pasta? And then work out the volume of jar. And given that it's pretty much full, you could then use that to estimate how many pieces of pasta are in this jar. So that's just an example of where multiplication and division can actually um, tell you something that, okay, maybe knowing how much pasta is in a, in a jar isn't that useful, but knowing how many cells in a body could be. Um, a good example of that is, um, so which is heavier? The, uh, a blue whale, which is supposed to be one of the largest mammals on the planet, or the uh, giant redwood tree. So General Sherman is a very famous tree in California that's a giant redwood. And so which of those is heavier? I mean, no one is going to cut down General Sherman to try and answer that question. And sim similarly, I don't think anyone's going to try and weigh, weigh a blue whale. So, but you can still try and answer the question. So what you can do is you can, you can look at the tree and say, well, okay, what is it similar to? So we can measure its height and we can measure its um, diameter, that's no problem. So we can get an idea of the volume of a tree. But then it comes to, well, how do we work out the mass, the weight of a tree? Well, for that, we need to know something about its density. So to do that, we think, well, let's compare it to something we know something about. Um, so water's a good example, okay? We know how dense water is. Okay? So what we can do is then think, well, okay, does a tree float or not? And that'll give us some idea of whether a tree's denser or not or less dense than water. It turns out, if you look at the base of the tree, that's actually quite dense. So if you try to float the base of a tree, so a tree trunk in water, it would sink. But if you try to um, float a, a log in water, that would generally float, so it's less dense. So further up the tree, it's less dense. So we can say, well, on average, it's probably the same density as water. Um, and so from that, you can say, right, I know my density of my tree, I know its volume, and I can multiply the two together to get an estimate of its mass. And it turns out if you do that, you will discover that General Sherman, the redwood in California, is actually heavier than a blue whale. What, what I really love about uh, math and biology and, and getting to bring these two subjects that I really love together is that um, you can actually get a lot further with your understanding of these problems than you could with just intuition alone and you can really um, push um, your, your thought process. You, you can get so far with logic, um, but if you can formalise that using math, you can get a whole lot further.